Hello everyone, my name is Teresa O'Leary. I'm a personal health informatics PhD student from Northeastern University. Today I'm presenting our paper, Investigating Opportunities for Crowdsourcing in Church-Based Health Interventions, a participatory design study. This work is part of a four-year community-based participatory research project. The goal of the project is to design, develop, and evaluate an mHealth intervention to address health disparities faced by predominantly Black church communities. In our first year of the project, we work directly with church members to identify the needs and strengths of their communities and to engage church members in the participatory design of the mHealth application. Black churches in the U.S. have a strong tradition of social action and community outreach. This is aimed at addressing inequities, including health inequities, faced by their congregation and the surrounding communities. They are often the most visible and respected organizations in the African American community. These church communities represent an important source of social support for the congregants, with affordances such as existing health ministry initiatives, community-based resources, and frequent and regular opportunities for members to interact. However, limited work has explored how technology developed in a religious or spiritual context can promote health and wellness. While there are distinct benefits to embedding a health technology intervention into a church community, there are also unique challenges. The practices, needs, and priorities of churches vary significantly, even among churches of the same religious denomination, meaning that Intervention content developed by one church community may feel inauthentic or worse, inappropriate in another. Further, designing an intervention for a community with long-term membership poses challenges to engagement. Such interventions require a large quantity of content that is not only culturally relevant, but also continuously updates and evolves with the community. In community-based participatory research, or CBPR, Researchers work in partnership with community members through each phase of the project. Community members are viewed as experts of their local context and play an active role in identifying important problems and developing solutions. Therefore, we partnered with an organization that provides resources to over 100 faith organizations serving predominantly Black churches. This organization identified two churches to support the first year of the project. Church members joined us for a number of participatory design activities over the course of the year, each activity building upon what we had learned in the previous. Beyond using CBPR for the initial designs of the application, we explored how crowdsourcing could further tailor an mHealth intervention. Crowdsourcing is an efficient means of collecting and enhancing user-generated contributions, allowing networked communities to provide information, resources, and creatively author content to solve problems. Like other types of community engagement research, involving community members ultimately can enhance public health interventions and programming to reflect the underlying principles, values, and beliefs of the priority community. While crowdsourcing has been applied in many public health domains, crowdsourcing techniques have yet to be designed to create tailored behavior change content for unique spiritual communities. Specifically, we investigate how crowdsourcing can be used to harness the collective power of church communities to create socially relevant and meaningful content tailored to users' specific cultural needs. We report on participatory design sessions in which church members created mHealth interventions that leveraged a range of crowdsourcing techniques in their church communities. Our work explores the types of resources and support church members seek through a faith-based mHealth application and how the context and culture of the church impacts access to these resources. Today, we present a subset of our findings as they relate to church members' motivation to participate in crowdsourcing within their faith communities. To answer our research questions, we developed a novel modular storyboard method. We can roughly think of it as an academic choose-your-own-adventure storybook where the protagonist uses a church app to address a health concern. Similar to a static storyboard, each storyboard has the same overarching storyline. This allowed for both researchers and participants to readily compare between storyboards. However, given that we, the researchers, are not members of the priority communities, it was important for participants to truly drive the use cases and design decisions in the storyboards. Therefore, participants were encouraged to customize their boards by choosing between storylines, adding new parts to the story, 
and completing fill in the blanks and even writing all over the storyboards. Participants completed storyboards individually. In the following session, participants worked in groups on shared boards to help reach consensus around crowdsourcing tasks. Interviews and focus groups were audio recorded and transcribed. We conducted a thematic analysis of focus group content guided by our research questions with the aim of identifying design insights. We invite you to check out the full paper for an analysis of crowdsourcing techniques that draws upon the public health crowdsourcing topology. Nine church members participated in the focus group sessions. All church members self-identified as black, six were female, and three were male. Participant ages ranged from 33 to 73. Data was collected in a total of four focus groups and eight interviews. For the sake of time, I will discuss our findings as they relate to crowdsourcing tasks and motivations. I invite you to check out our full paper for additional findings as they relate to types of support church members would like to receive and barriers to accessing this support. During our storyboard sessions and interviews, participants discussed three main motivations to contribute to the application. One, supporting the missions of the church. Two, extending one's faith practices. And three, strengthening connections to the church community. These motivations were illustrated in the types of crowdsourcing tasks participants endorsed from the storyboards and the crowdsourcing tasks participants themselves created. The simplest form of reinforcing community using a place-based mHealth application is through awareness of events by keeping a community-wide calendar up to date. A church calendar was not mentioned in the storyboard, and yet multiple participants saw the benefit of a calendar in the storyboards. A calendar of events not only encourages in-person attendance, but also allows for passive awareness of the goings-ons of the community. One participant who had moved states away from her home church describes how she uses the calendar. You can like download stuff and you can figure out they're having like a kids camp and they're doing a food drive, even out of state. Even though she is unable to attend the events in person, awareness of these events helps her feel even more connected to her community. Another participant suggested that by supporting these church events through a simple solution, like an up-to-date church calendar, not only impacts current members' abilities to participate and increase fellowship opportunities for interaction, it promotes the growth of church membership. An up-to-date calendar supports both the mission of the church and participant motivation to connect with peers in their community. However, both churches in this formative work have defunct online calendars. While a digital calendar may not pose a technical challenge or innovation, understanding how these existing technologies can be leveraged for community-level health behavior change provides insight into sustainable mHealth interventions. Participants were also motivated to engage in crowdsourcing tasks that support or strengthen their spiritual practices. This motivation became clear with participant reactions to two scenarios in the storyboards that depicted similar crowdsourcing tasks using a rating or nominating technique. In both scenarios, the protagonist is asked to rate a message as being helpful or unhelpful in a particular health context. In the first scenario, the protagonist is asked to rate messages with health content. Participants generally found the rating of health messages to be beneficial, given that it would result in health messages that felt useful to their community. However, they also thought that the activity would be time consuming and therefore they might not even engage with the task. A rating activity was also applied to scriptural content. In a second scenario, the character is asked to rate or nominate scripture as most helpful when in need of comfort or encouragement. While some participants chose this storyline as a way for the character to contribute to the application, all participants stated that using the term rating scripture was inappropriate and that earlier language contained in the storyboard of nominating scripture was a much more sensitive description of the activity. One participant explained why scriptural messages required a more nuanced approach to crowdsourcing. They state, but what's rating a scripture? Like what scripture may be good for me on this day may not even be good for that person. That scripture may not be something that resonates with me, but on this particular day, that scripture could uplift the next person. Therefore, participants suggested that a more interesting and meaningful activity would be to nominate and relate scripture to contextual circumstances. 
Participants felt that context, such as how that scripture has helped them in the past and under what health circumstances, was critical for nominating socially relevant messages. Further, by leveraging the church community in the approach, these messages could reflect a congregation's preferences for the scripture use and Bible translation. Members of one ministry within one of the churches already thematically tag and compile scripture in a paper-based monthly prayer calendar. However, this activity is limited to this smaller group of ministry members. Our findings show that participants were motivated to engage in crowdsourcing with scripture. Nominating and tagging scripture within the application both supports existing faith practices by promoting reflection on scripture and increases access to this activity beyond a particular ministry. Our findings illuminated participant desires to connect with their peers and build stronger connections with the church community through an mHealth application. They further stated preferences towards crowdsourcing tasks and conceptualized how such tools could benefit their community. We invite you to check out the full paper for a discussion of the reciprocal benefits of mHealth interventions when anchored in these church communities and how crowdsourcing tasks can be leveraged to support longitudinal community engagement. I will now talk about value-based crowdsourcing. Participant reactions to authoring and rating health messages differed from their reaction to writing and nominating messages with scripture. While our work focused on exploring design requirements for an mHealth application, designing for values beyond health enhances engagement. Prior research demonstrates that Black members of Protestant faith communities feel a strong affiliation between their faith and health. Promoting scripture for health topics and concerns was proposed as a low-burden crowdsourcing activity to create tailored mHealth intervention content that reflects values important to church members, spirituality, and faith. However, unlike reading health messages as helpful or unhelpful, nominating the most helpful scripture was rejected by participants. Rating or nominating was perceived as trivializing scriptural content. In contrast, participants expressed enthusiasm for contextualizing the scripture to create more meaningful health communication messages. This activity both increased community access to faith-based support and served as an opportunity for the individual to practice their faith through reflection on scripture. Designing crowdsourcing tasks that reflect multiple values of this population can simultaneously nurture application engagement and strengthen spiritual practice. And further, participant correction of the rating scripture activity demonstrates the strengths of the long-term relationships researchers have with community members when conducting CBPR. Through rapport building over the course of the project, our participants were empowered as experts of their faith communities and thus felt comfortable correcting our terminology and generating their own description of and designed for working with scriptural content in the app. Through our participatory design study, we investigated motivations and preferences for engaging with an mHealth app among church members of predominantly black churches. Our findings shed light on how crowdsourcing tasks can be leveraged to increase access to church-situated social supports. We further discussed the importance of aligning crowdsourcing tasks with participant values of fellowship and faith. The needs, priorities, and strengths of social organizations are ever-changing. Therefore, future HCI work and mHealth intervention delivery should focus on how implementing crowdsourcing approaches may positively complement this evolution. Currently, we are building upon what we've learned through our formative work. Through an iterative design process, community members continue to provide insight and feedback to ensure the values we identified are represented in the application. Practically, this has meant identifying opportunities for leveraging core values, such as fellowship and spirituality, to enhance tech-enabled health promotion activities anchored in a church community. We invite you to check out our full paper, and if you have any questions or feedback, we of course would love to hear from you. Thanks.